buying lenses can oftentimes be a bit of an overwhelming experience. I mean, what focal range do you need? What f-stop? What brand? And then within that, there are endless different options. So I've decided to construct five ideal kits for different types of landscape photographers, including my own kit. Full disclaimer, we're going to be covering Sony lenses for this because that's what I personally own, but all of that is transferable to the different camera brands like Canon and Nikon should have equivalents to almost all of these lenses. Also for this video, we're covering full frame lenses, so if you have APS-C or something different, that's something to consider while watching. Now, this is just my personal opinion. Anytime someone recommends gear here on YouTube, please take what they say, including myself, with a grain of salt and do your own proper research before buying. Now let's dive in. Okay, so kit number one, this is our lightweight budget kit. Let me show you what we're working with here. So for this kit, we have the 16 to 35 F4 lens. This is one of my favorite lenses, been one of my favorites for many, many years. I've owned it for Canon, for Nikon, and now for Sony. I'm using F4. I personally don't find the need to shoot F2.8 that often, only when I'm doing night sky photography, and I'll talk about that a little bit later, but if you do a ton of astrophotography, you might consider getting a wide lens with 2.8. You can look for a Tamron or Sigma for a cheaper version if you buy a name brand f2.8 wide lens, you're probably going to spend a decent amount of money. In fact, for this lens, you're going to pay almost double for that. So if you don't need that 2.8, it makes sense to do the f4. You're going to save a ton of weight. You're going to save a ton of money. And this one's only 12.5 ounces, which is pretty ridiculous for uh, a lens like this. The second lens is the Tamron 28 to 200 millimeter. And this is personally my favorite lens. I paid full price for this thing. This isn't a sponsored video by them. I just really love this lens. If somebody said, hey, I just purchased a camera and I don't have any lenses, what do you recommend as my first lens? This is it. This lens does almost everything to the point where you don't need a lot of other lenses with this one. 28 on the wide end is perfect. Uh, it's 2.8 at the wide end, so you could actually do a little bit of astrophotography with this lens. And then all the way to 200 millimeter to get perfect detail shots. I could just put this on the camera, go for a hike, and be pretty content with what I'm capturing. Now, this lens is only for Sony. It's only for Sony. I know there's a few equivalents, so I've actually pulled them up right here. There's this one, which is the Canon 24 to 240 for $900. Now I personally can't speak to the quality of this lens, I've never used it. And then on the Nikon end, you have the 24 to 200 millimeter. Looks like the ratings are pretty decent and this one's also $900. So clearly these two lenses are trying to compete with each other. Do a little research and see if these are for you. But if you have Sony, you're lucky enough to get the Tamron one. I would just get the Tamron one. It is absolutely fantastic. This whole setup's gonna be about 1850 new. Um, about 1,250 you can find it used on like mpb.com or something like that. Personally, I recommend checking out used lenses and also just waiting for sales to see if you can save a little bit of money. But this is the perfect setup for somebody who's more of an avid hiker or a backpacker. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so kit number two, this is the budget kit. Let me show you what we have here. All right, so again, it's a two lens setup. We're not at three yet. I have a few other kits that include the trifecta of three lenses. Um, and this one's also Sony only. Uh, the Tamron 50 to 400 millimeter is only for Sony. I don't know of any equivalents. I tried doing a little bit of research. I, again, I don't know how Tamron does it. I'm not entirely sure. I don't know how they managed to make a lens this good from 50 all the way to 400 millimeters. If I didn't already have my Sigma 100 to 400 lens, I would totally <laughs> buy this one. This is a pretty good value. Okay, so the mid-range kit. This is gonna be our first three lens kit, and this is the 16 to 35, same as before, but now we're adding in a mid-range lens. So instead of doing the telephoto lens and the mid-range lens in one, we're using the 24 to 105 and the Sigma 100 to 400 lens. Now you could buy the Sony 100 to 400 lens, but <laughs> it costs about $2,500. 
you can find the Sigma for about 750 used, 950 new. You know, sometimes they have deals on them where you can get them for even cheaper. If you want to check out some other versions of the 100 to 400 lens, Tamron also makes a really nice one. But this lens is available for pretty much any camera system, I think. Um, at least also available for Canon and for Nikon. The 24 to 105 is a great lens. Again, we're doing f4 to keep it a little bit smaller and way less money than the 24 to 70 that is 2.8. Now, alternatively to the 16 to 35 lens, let's say you wanted to shoot something a little bit wider than this, like you like to do super ultra wide scenes, you might consider something like this. This is the 12 to 24 lens. This one's F4. You can find this one used, I think for 11 to $1,200. I would go with the F4 version because as you'll see in a second, the F2.8 is <laughs> quite expensive. There is a little bit of compromise on the edges in terms of sharpness, especially at F4. It's a pretty good compromise to make though. So if you are somebody who likes to shoot really, really wide, you might want to go with something like this, like a 12 millimeter or 14 millimeter. You can also look at Sigma and Tamron because they have really nice equivalents for this. As with most of these lenses, Nikon and Canon also have their equivalents. Here is the Nikon 14 to 30 millimeter F4, and this comes in at about 1350, and Canon's 14 to 35 millimeter F4, which comes in at about $1,400 with a $100 rebate. All right, kit number four is the, uh, well, <laughs> let's just call it the expensive kit. This is the kit for somebody where money is no object and uh, for somebody who isn't really that worried about weight either. This one is including the 12 to 24. This time we're moving to the 2.8 version, which new is about $3,000. We've got the 24 to 105 standard F4, and then we're rocking the Sony 100 to 400, which is $2,500. The 12 to 24, it's it's three thousand dollars, but it's it's really good. Like it's a it's a fantastic lens. It is ultra sharp all the way through. The 2.8 is great for astrophotography. If you're somebody who really needs that 2.8 and needs it to be as tack sharp as possible. It's probably the best wide lens I've ever used. Again, at $3,000, it's hard to justify that price tag, to be honest. Again, 24 to 105 to cover that range in the middle, if you need it. And then the Sony 100 to 400 lens, which is a touch sharper than the Sigma that I own, but again, at a completely different price tag. And you'll notice the weight of these lenses. I mean, the uh, 12 to 24, almost 30 ounces, and then the 100 to 400 lens from Sony is almost 50 ounces. If money is no object and you just want the sharpest possible glass, here's a kit for you. And then finally, what am I using? What's my kit? Well, let me show you. So this is my main lens setup right here. 16 to 35 F4, similar to the ones that I showed you before. This one is the older version. It's a little bit beat up. I've used it for a while. It's still really great. This is the Zeiss version. It's really sharp. I really enjoy using it for my photography. I don't really see a need to switch or upgrade to the new version. It is a little heavier. It's heavier by, I think about, what was it? About six ounces, something like that. But it's still pretty small. So that's what I got wide lens wise. Tamron 28 to 200. I thought this was gonna be a lens that I only brought around a few times, like, uh, maybe I'll put it in the camera bag every once in a while. It's pretty much always in my camera bag now. I just love using this lens. Sometimes I'll put this on my camera and just use this throughout the entire shoot. And then the Sigma 100 to 400 lens. If you followed the channel for a while, I mean, <laughs> it's rare that I don't pull out this lens. I love zooming in on you know different scenes in the distance and this really helps me to do it again if i was purchasing all this stuff for the first time i think the sony i would i would definitely get the new version that is a little lighter weight um this lens i would consider getting the tamron 50 to 400 instead uh, i do like the sigma but you know that, that one is pretty awesome. I think in terms of Im image quality, they're very similar, but it would be nice to have that extra focal length range. There is one more lens I have here that I want to show you. This is the Nikon 14-24. to 24. 
I picked this thing up back in, I think, 2012. So it's been many years since I've had this, and I've adapted this thing to Canon cameras back in the day. I've, of course, used it when I, when I was on Nikon. I used it on my D850, and then now I've got this NovaFlex adapter to put it on my Sony cameras. And I rarely bring this out with me anymore, but when I do know I'm gonna do night photography, um, I'll bring this lens out. So I do have an option to shoot 2.8 at night. I have shot astrophotography on this f4 lens and gotten some pretty decent results, especially with stacking and with, you know, different techniques you can use. But if you're somebody who really wants to shoot night sky photography, it's really not a bad option to have something like this in your kit, but it's not, I don't feel like it's necessary for most photographers. I would say it comes with me on my shoots maybe like 10 to 15 percent of the time. And now I'd love to hear from you. What's your current lens setup and are you happy with it? Please let me know in the comments. I know there's a few that I didn't include here like macro lenses or tilt shift lenses and then of course if you're doing more wildlife photography you might consider like a 500 or 600 millimeter lens but overall, I feel like this is perfect for most landscape photographers. If you want to learn more from me, you can schedule a post-processing session with me, link in the description, or check out one of my workshops. As always, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.